So we're looking at the equation of spheres here, and it's actually just a movement of the equation of circles into three dimensions. So we've really got to understand the equation of circles first. So this is the equation of a circle, x squared plus y squared equals r squared, where r is the radius. Now, this is really just an application of Pythagoras' theorem. What we're saying is there must be an x value and a y value such that when you square them both and add them together, you get this hypotenuse. Now, we hold that hypotenuse steady, so let's make it something simple. An example, x squared plus y squared equals 2 squared, so 4. Now, we can shove in a value for x, say 1.5, and when you solve that for y, you get y equals 1.32. So, you can put that on like a Cartesian plane here, 0.5, that's 1.5 there, and y is 1.32, about here. Right, and you could do that for an infinite number of x values um, that are all between 2 and negative 2, and shove them all in there and you get a bunch of dots around a circle, right? So that is what the equation of a circle is. It's a relationship between x and y based on Pythagoras' theorem. Now, the equation of a sphere is going to be identical. So here it is, x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals a squared. Now, the a does mean radius in this instance. Uh, now, this sphere is a relationship between x, y, and z that will do the same thing that was working with this circle. It's still Pythagoras, it's just in three dimensions here. So here, we can see that we're in three dimensions. We can sub in a random x value, a random y value, and then this is calculating the random z value that satisfies this equation for the particular radius we've chosen here. Now, when we start that simulation up, it does it many, 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 many times, and all of these dots are starting to create our sphere here in three dimensions. Now, we can uh, move this um, sphere around using this formula. So just by subtracting h, k, and l from x, y, and z, respectively. Now, these are just numbers, and this is going to move our sphere in the same way that you would expect it to move it. So uh, that h value, if we subtract, say, 3 from it, it's going to move it forward along the x-axis. If we add something here, it's going to move it um, backwards along the y-axis. And z, if we're adding something here, it's going to move it down. So it kind of works in the opposite to what you'd expect. But you've graphed so many of these now that you understand that when you're subtracting from these things, it's going to move in the opposite way. So that's the Cartesian form of the equation of a sphere, but we can also look at the vector equation of a sphere, and I love this, I think it's really clever. So on our three-dimensional graph here, we can just put a dot at C, and so C is like our center, right? Now, we then need to create a new vector uh, to point R, right? So that's, now that's vector CR. Now, we need the magnitude of vector CR to be equal to uh, just the radius that we want, right? So a magnitude of the vector, the length of that vector, is equal to A. Now, I can drag that vector around everywhere I want around the center, and that R changes, but the center doesn't change. The center is a particular point. Now, how can I sort of rewrite this so that it's not two points, but instead two vectors. Well, if we want to find CR, we know that that's equal to um, OR minus OC. And we still want the magnitude of OR minus OC, and that's equal to A. Now, just to finish this off, this is a vector equation, and you've done vector equations before, so you know that R the vector R represents all possible vectors. It's not just the vector, it's all of the possible vectors created by the equation. So instead of OR, we'll just call that vector R, and I'll keep that here. That's the position vector of the center of the circle. The magnitude of that needs to be equal to A, and that is the vector equation of a sphere. So kick off with something really, really simple here. Find the equation of a sphere with radius 6, center 1, negative 2, 3. Now, the question doesn't say Cartesian or vector equation, so let's do both. Uh, let's do the Cartesian one first. So we want x minus something. All right, so it's positive 1x, so I need to do minus 1. I need to do the opposite of what you might think. 
plus y, I need to do minus 2, so I need to add 2 there, squared, plus z, 3, so I need to do minus 3, opposite of what I might expect, and then I need 6 squared. Now, I can leave it like that, but since I've got that 6 squared there, I can maybe change it to just the number 36. All right, that's the Cartesian form. What about the uh, vector equation form? Well, it's pretty simple. It's the magnitude r minus all of this bit here, all of the position vector of the center. So it's minus i minus 2j plus 3k. The magnitude of equals to the uh, radius, which is 6. And that's it. Uh, I can put in my little thing is there. So that's finding the equation of a sphere, but sphere both in Cartesian form and in um, vector form. So one more example here. Find the intersection of the line r equals t 2i plus j minus 2k and the sphere, this thing here. Now it seems like a bit wild and a bit like, whoa, what could I do here? But it's actually relatively straightforward. We can write the intersection of the line in parametric form. And that will give us equations for x, y, and z. And then we can sub in those equations for x, y, and z into our sphere equation and solve that. So first of all, let's write that in parametric form. All right, so parametric form, x equals 2t, y equals just t, and z equals negative 2t. Subbing those in for x, y, and z, we get something that looks like that. Now, when we expand it, we get 2 squared, which is 4, and then t squared plus t squared, uh, negative 2 squared is 4, so we get plus 4t squared equals 9. Add them all together, we get 9t squared equals 9. Now solving that, I'm just going to jump through this, 9 divided by 9 is 1, t squared equals 1, so t equals 1, but uh, plus or minus. Now, now that you know that t equals plus or minus 1, you can sub plus 1 and minus 1 in to either our parametric equations to get x, y, and z values, or just straight into this one here. Now, I think it's going to be easier if I just sub it into that. So now I can say that r equals uh, 1 times all of that, which is just going to be uh, 2, 1, negative 2, right? 1 times 2 is 2, 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. If I do um, negative 1, if I put negative 1 there, I'm just going to get all of that in reverse. Negative 2, negative 1, and 2. That, uh, those, sorry, are my two intersection points. Uh, which, when you think about it, a line passing through a sphere, there are going to be two intersection points as it pops in one end of the sphere and out the other end of the sphere unless it's creating what's called a tangent to the sphere and it's just touching it, then they're only going to have one intersection point. All right, I've covered a lot there, uh, but that is the equation of spheres.